From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Diane Parker. Ed has our Monday forecast. Plus, we take you to Red Lodge as flood debris cleanup is in full force. But first, our top story. Big news out of Lewistown, Montana, as two new queens are crowned in the Miss Montana USA and Miss Teen Montana USA pageant. MTN's Ryan Gamboa introduces us to the new 2023 title holders. Miss Montana is a title that's more than a pretty face. It's women empowerment and it's philanthropy in communities across Montana, but only two can take on that title. It takes blood, sweat and tears to get to this point on stage. Ava Williams <laughs> is Maddie Rick. Two days of competition from interviews, swimwear and evening gown. 2023 Miss Montana USA Maddie Rigg and 2023 Miss Montana Teen USA Ava Williams. I'd been wishing on this moment for so, so long. It was everything I thought it would be. It was the crown, the sash, the support, the love. It was crazy. Uh, I don't think it's sunk in, even a little bit. I feel so blessed, so honored. The pomp and pageantry ended for former crown holders, Teen Julia Kunau of Lewistown and Miss Heatherly O'Keefe, a native to Florida. I don't think any amount of words could truly describe how unreal this feels and how much of an impact it has made on my life. You know, being crowned 602 days ago, back in September of 2021, it has truly changed my life in a number of ways. And I've had the opportunity to travel all across the state with my mom, with my little sister Julia, with some other of the girls, and it's just been an absolute honor uh, this year. So, what's next for our queens? Maddie Rigg, rooted in Kalispell, representing Glacier, has plans to educate out-of-state visitors on how to experience the nature and beauty of the treasure state. And so I hope to push a message that if you come to visit this beautiful, incredible state, and I hope that a lot of people do, you need to do it respectfully and responsibly so that you stay safe and that we keep our, our wildlife and our, our plant life safe as well. Ava Williams, the teen pick from Billings, values teenage confidence, but has a nonprofit platform bags of books. We have reusable canvas bags with a few books in it and I donate them to low income children around the state. And so that's something I'd really like to spread. If I could get it outside of Montana, that would be such a dream. For the two Montana natives, representing Montana is a dream. More importantly, a privilege they won't take lightly. In awe that it was me this year. When I'm on this stage, it's not just me. It's my mom, it's my sister, it's my dad, it's my stepdad, it's everybody who's helping me out. In Lewistown, Ryan Gamboa, MTN News. We take you to another small Montana town this noon. Laurel has been hit with obscene vandalism. So graphic in nature, city leaders are refusing to release pictures. The vandalism targets race and the LGBTQ community. MTN's Charlie Kleps reports. Parks are typically a place for fun, but over the weekend, Thompson Park here in Laurel became the scene of some intense vandalism. Graphic pictures and words were spray painted all over the women's bathroom here, and the city says it'll cost nearly $2,000 to fix. It's disgusting, to be quite honest with you. It's the only way to describe the alarming vandalism that was found in the Thompson Park bathroom over the weekend. Disgusting. Words and images so graphic that the city of Laurel is choosing not to share the pictures. We've been seeing it quite a bit all over town. Nothing to this extent, but pretty much the same words and all the explicit stuff that was on the walls here. Laurel City employee Troy Clifton has been repainting the walls all morning. He says that while vandalism might be common, this instance was different. I understand uh, kids will be kids, but this isn't kids stuff. This was definitely they had malicious intent behind it. There was uh, some racist things involved and whatnot, and it's just not acceptable. Racist and homophobic statements covered almost every inch of the women's bathroom. These, along with images of male genitalia, has Clifton feeling for any parent who experienced it. I couldn't imagine being a parent and having a child come in. Mom, there's stuff written all over the wall. Just, it's ridiculous. The vandalism has been covered now, but the city estimates that the cost of repairing the damages will be nearly $2,000, and they're offering a reward for any information regarding potential suspects. This takes away from parks and all the other stuff that need to get done. This is unnecessary. And Laurel, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. 
green shaded areas show us where we have at least the potential for some general thunderstorms, meaning we're going to likely avoid the large hail and the very strong winds. Still, small hail and some gusty winds are possible, but notice this is something we don't see often where we've got a little cutout area from Helena, Billings southward to northern Wyoming, where there's less potential for this afternoon. By tomorrow, that shaded area includes almost all of northern Montana and a little divot cut out here through southwest Montana. By the time we get to Wednesday, we're looking at widespread thunderstorms across the area, at least the potential for it. But our attention shifts on Thursday. Instead of talking about thunderstorms, we're going to talk about the potential of very heavy rain that could even cause some localized flooding. More on that coming up. A lot of folks in Montana, they want to know where did the homes go? Where did the hot tubs go? Where did our bridges and roadways go that fell into our waterways during last summer's historic flooding? Well, this right here is what 6,000 cubic yards of vegetative debris looks like. This took crews about two weeks to clear from Rock Creek near Red Lodge. And the cleanup project is expected to take a couple of months and result in up to 100,000 cubic yards of debris. Anything from vegetative to homes. This is the moment Mike Kinsey's Park City home toppled into the Yellowstone River last June. It was carried five miles downstream, lodging on a sandbar near Laurel. Now it's awaiting an archaeological survey and is expected to be removed this month. It was pretty dramatic when it left here. This is where the house sat and this was the very back of the house. These are my water lines going out to where my house was out here. Other than a miracle, I don't know what I'm gonna do here. Several other homes were also ripped from the riverbanks, but unlike Mike's, most disintegrated and personal belongings are long gone. It's a lot of debris. Most of that home debris is destined for the landfill, but vegetative debris is set for incineration. We'll burn it down to almost nothing, and it's really clean, it's, it's efficient. It can burn several hundred thousand cubic yards of vegetative debris really quickly. But with spring water levels on the rise, time is a factor. We also have rock and sediment that came down that has caused less river channels. After a winter of working closely with various agencies, Jake Ganyu says permitting is in progress and crews are gearing up to remove that rock and sediment. We're doing this as quickly, safely and efficiently as we can. Bridges and culverts that crumbled into the raging waters are also being drug out. CTC Disaster Response does the actual removal and Debris Tech does the removal monitoring. The two traveling contractors specialize in disaster recovery around the country and have debris removal down to a science, charging the state by the cubic yard. Right now it's around $3 million. It could go up. The project, 75% funded through a FEMA public assistance grant and 25% by a non-federal cost share. But ask any flood victim and they'll tell you, you can't put a price on memories lost. It was taken in 1997. We see all these cottonwoods. This one was still in the yard when the house went that one and this one over here that you can't see and this one, they all went that night. Boy. In Red Lodge, Diane Parker, MTN News.